Um, this morning we have a little different type of service, probably. For you, I had uh, friends, Tim and Dia. Some of you met them. Raise your hand, Tim and Dia. Dia, I can see them there. They're visiting their longtime friends from. Well, if anybody I know over here for sure, I've known them the longest. But, uh, knew him when we were in uh, junior high school, I suppose. He was our Sunday school teacher for a while. And so all the bad doctrine I got, I got from that guy. No. But uh, it's good to have them here. They called us up and we're making a trip so missionaries could stay at their house in Minneapolis. A family from Kenya needed a place to stay for six weeks. So they said, okay, we're out of here. And so now they're leeching off of us and everybody else are going to go visit. But uh, no, it's great to see Tim again and to visit with them. They left the fellowship for a while to go to uh, Mexico as missionaries for eight years. And, and uh, so it's good to be back with them today. So I, since they were going to be here, I, I thought, well, I'll put Tim to work and we'll split the service this morning a little bit and uh, have Tim come and speak and share what's on his heart. And then I'll, I'll close as well. But uh, let, let's just pray for this rest of this service. Your Father, again, as we open up your word, would you speak to our hearts by the Holy Spirit and uh, just ask and thank you for your this day and that we can trust you in it. Lord, you are the God, just as much God in the bad days as you are in the good days. And we just pray now through whatever our circumstances are, we'd be able to take our eyes and off what we have going even this afternoon and uh, the rest of this day or this week holds, Lord, just be able to focus uh, nothing but you and your word here. So I pray you keep our minds on on you and on things above right now and to just continue to lead in this time. Lord, we bless your name. You're worthy of all our praise and adoration. And so we ask your blessing on your word. It's now as it's presented in Jesus' name. Amen. So Tim, why don't you come up and Amen. What a privilege to be here with you. As we uh, sang that last song, I don't know if, if uh, Ruthie could put it up quick, uh, the, just the, the background in that song. And uh, <clears throat> the words say he's the God of the mountains. But look at that mountaintop. There's nothing that grows up there. Dan's dad used to sing a song, In the valley, he restores my soul. You know, we all want to be on the, up on the mountaintop. Maybe that's because we're so prideful and people can see us better than we think there. But it's in the valley that he restores our soul. It's in the valley where we grow in Christ. And one of the hymns we sang, the, the caption underneath the hymn is, For me to live as Christ. That, that's the whole purpose of life, is to live to the glory of God. I want to talk a little bit this morning. Um, I, I really like that clock, Dan, back there, because it doesn't move. So I'm sure I can get under the time that you said. I'll just refer to that clock if I miss it. <laughs> but uh, what, uh, when Dan asked me to speak, um, he, uh, the first thing that come to my mind is, is something that's really been on my heart for, for some months. Uh, and I've preached in, in a few places about it, but... Uh, I'm kind of taking together three different messages that I've, I've spoken over the last few months. And, and my emphasis is the Word of God. It's just to, to uh, know the, the breadth and the depth and the value that the Word of God has for us. Uh, I, I recently read a book um, my wife was going to give it away, and I said, no, I, I, I want that one. And uh, it, 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 the title of the book is Taking God at His Word. And, and in that book, uh, uh, something that he said has just 
stuck in my heart since I read it last February, this past February. And the Word of God is more than enough. It's not just enough. It's more than enough for the people of God to live to the glory of God. So as we go out, my wife and I are on, a, on an extended leech program here where we just go from house to house till we get kicked out. And, <laughs> um, but, you know, God has, has allowed us to share our home with people that have suffered greatly over in, in Kenya. We, don't, we didn't even know them before they got to our house. We'd never met them before. But what a blessing to them and to us. And... and what a blessing to us to be able to travel and, and stay and fellowship and reunite with people we've known along the way that have contributed to our growth and hopefully, uh, contrary to what Dan said, have, we have contributed to theirs somewhat too. My desire in my life becomes more and more single focused as I grow older. And that is to serve Jesus. That is that, that Christ in me will be what people see. I don't want them to see anything I did. It doesn't matter what I did. It doesn't matter what I've accomplished. You know, uh, Bruce uh, uh, talked this morning about carnal Christians. And, and you know, the world is after the, the, the fame and the knowledge and, the, and the, the things. It doesn't matter. It's all going to burn. And, and I've, God has allowed me to go from uh, nothing to an electronics instructor up to president of the college. But to what avail is it if I don't know Christ? if I haven't yielded to the king. And what's become more and more important to me is the word of God. And that's what I want to talk about today. My primary focus is going to be in the Psalms. Psalm 1, Psalm 19, and Psalm 119. And those just pour out the need for the word of God in our lives. And it starts in Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Is that man's wisdom? No, Paul's talking about God's wisdom, the word of God. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I just, uh, every year I guess everybody has to do it. It certainly beats the alternative. I had to, I celebrated a birthday here recently and and uh, I, I got a message on Facebook from somebody I haven't been in contact for almost 40 years. It was a former student of mine. And, and he just thanked me for the example and for the, the uh, opportunities that through my teaching and, and that have, have yielded him in his life. All in the physical. To my knowledge, he's not saved. I don't know. I haven't seen him in 40 years. But... It was just interesting that what we do matters. And that's great that I had an influence on his life, that, that he went on to be a successful uh, uh, person in business and, and in that. And uh, probably at the time that I was instructing him, I wasn't even saved myself, so I probably wasn't setting a very good example. Um, hard enough setting a good example being saved. Uh, but... It, you know, it's, it's uh, now that's my focus. I want what I do in life, in, in thought and in deed, in word and in deed, I want it to be to the glory of God. I want it to, to just exude Christ. 
uh, that, that people might see Christ in me, the hope of glory. That, that's, our, that's our reason for living. So I want to tor- turn to Psalm 1, starting off there. <clears throat> and uh, it's interesting how the book starts out. Uh, this, like I said, this is a message. This psalm here is a message in itself. We could go on for uh, a good length of time talking about the uh, about Psalm one and the contrast between the the uh, man of God and the man of the world, or the carnal man and the. Uh, I really like the, your teaching today, Bruce. It just it, it, that's what Psalm one is all about. Blessed is the man, uh, David starts out. Blessed is the man. And it's not the man who walks in the counsel of the wicked or sits in the, the or is in the way of the sinners or in the seat of the scoffers. Blessed is the man, what? In verse 2 it says, his but. That word but in the Bible is a real important but. It's a real important transitional word. David just went from blessed is the man that doesn't do these things. But. His delight is in the law of the Lord. That's where his delight is. But he doesn't leave it there. He doesn't just say, yeah, I really like that. I really like ice cream. You know, we can like ice cream all we want until we taste it and taste a different one. I just had the great opportunity to to have some ice cream with some real maple syrup on it. Something Minnesotans don't do very often. And uh, that's a whole different experience, uh, a completely different experience. So, and, and that's what the Word of God is. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. On his law, he meditates day and night. Hold your place there and go with me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. (coughs) Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. Funny how the word of God all through from Genesis to Revelation just continually reinforces itself. It's not just in one place, you know. The world's books, they say something, and it's supposedly the gospel. The Word of God says it, and it reinforces it, and says it again, and and just reassures our heart that David wrote this back years before, and then Jeremiah comes around and writes the same thing. Blessed, in verse 7, blessed is the man. Starts out the same way that Psalm 1 does. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. I just saw this this morning. His trust is in the Lord. And whose trust is the Lord. It's not just in the Lord. It's not just in my strength. But it is the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my fortress. Who shall I be afraid? He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear. Let's go back to Psalm 1. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water. Just verifying the word of God is the truth. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. I've had the privilege of retiring and and working for 40 years for the same place, almost 40 years. And uh, the last two years, I guess it's two, um, I think I first retired in 2014 and then again in 2015. And according to my wife, I'm still not retired, but um, I I like what I get to do. I can get up in the morning and I can go out and sit in my patio or my hammock and just study the Word of God and meditate on it, you know, and just... 
If I want to get up and do some gardening, I can do that. And if I want to just meditate on the Word of God, I can do that. And that's what we need to do in our lives. How are we going to have an answer for those that, that are asking if we don't meditate on the Word of God? If this isn't, if it's truly like Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I eat bread every day. I don't go a day without having, usually, unless I'm fasting, I don't go a day without having a good good portion. I'm not a bad eater. Dan and Dave would, can certainly attest to that. I can, I can hold my own in eating. Uh, what are we doing with the Word of God? Are we meditating and eating and, and absorbing the Word of God? Is that our real bread of life? Is that what's given us the substance to go through the day? If we get through the, the, the portion of the day without it, we're going to be weak. We're going to be frail. And we're not going to have the answer. Bruce shared an example of, of manning the booth, I think it is in field days, uh, whatever, how many years ago it was. But uh, he shared, and, and a couple came along that was hungry for the word of God. And as he shared the story, it, uh, thankfulness rose up in my heart. Thank God he had the words of life to share with them. Thank God that, that God had put it in his heart and that he had meditated well on the subject he could share. But sometimes we're not there. We need to meditate day and night on the word of God. It needs to be our bread. You know, the, uh, like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. You know, I, I've had, uh, I thought of the example this year, I planted the first apple tree. I'm 71 years old and I've never had an apple tree. And I, I, my wife had been asking for a few years and I had an opportunity, I planted two of them this year. And our yard is in our backyard is about one third of the area you're sitting in. I mean, we have a really, really small yard. Um, but I've made good use of it with 28 rose bushes and a, a vegetable garden and a raspberry patch that produces 35 quarts of raspberries. And, and now I got a couple apple trees. But you know that apple tree, one of them has nine apples on it. I just planted it in, in April or May, I think it was. May 22nd, that's when it was. It's got nine apples already on it. Little boy next door comes over every day. Can I pick that apple yet? No, not yet. You gotta wait. You know, every single day. Can I pick the apple? Can I pick the apple? You know, that apple isn't for the tree itself. It's for us to enjoy. And if we're gonna be like trees planted by the water, it's not for us to enjoy, it's for us to pour out and feed other people spiritually, to have the answer for them, to have the words that will lead them, like Bruce did with that couple, to be able to share life with them, real life. We were out at Adam and Amanda's the other night and, and, and I having the maple syrup on ice cream and I just thought of it, there's a tree. And that sap, sure that sap provides life to the tree, but it also provides maple syrup. And, and, and it's, it's something that we can enjoy. Is that what our lives are doing? Are our lives a sweet aroma, a sweetness to other people around us? That's what they need to be. That's what my prayer is for Dan and Shelley and their family. As they go over to Macedonia, or I'm sorry, Germany first, and then Spain and Macedonia, that their lives are a sweetness to the people that they walk with, that they talk with, that they visit, that they haven't seen for years. As my wife and I go on this trip of 4,600 miles, my wife normally won't drive an hour, but God has given her grace and... and, and uh, she, she, we've enjoyed the trip so far. We've only got 1,600 gone, but it's okay. We're one-third of the way, and we've done well. And, and my, my heart's desire is that we can be a sweetness to the people that we're around. 
that we can be like a tree planted by water, yielding its fruit in season. As we come across people, as we come across friends, just to, to encourage them. One of the friends we're going to visit is somebody I served in submarines with in 1966. Hadn't talked to him, haven't seen him in 50 years, or how, how many of our years that is. Yeah, it's 51 years. Thought about him, and, and I looked it up online, saw the name that was in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, through circumstances, ended up writing him a letter. Two days later, I got a phone call. And uh, we talked for 45 minutes. Neither one of us would recognize the other one on the streets. But we remembered being together. And, uh, and we're going to have the opportunity to visit him. Four years ago, he got saved. So I'm going to have the opportunity to fellowship with him. Not like we used to in the bars, but at the, at the altar of God. We're going to have fellowship in Christ. And that's what we want to be. Like a tree planted by the water. And all he does, he prospers. It's not a worldly prospering. That's not a carnal prospering. The world's after the carnal prospering. You know, the world's goal is to make money and to be rich. And, and have fame. But the Christian's prosperity is that others might know Christ. Who was the uh, preacher? Was it George Mueller that prayed for 53 years? No, it was, uh, maybe it was. He prayed for 53 years for his friends, five of his friends. Four of them got saved before he died, and one of them got saved at his funeral. Huh? That's a life lived for Christ. Are we praying for those people around us? That's the prosperity I want in my life. That's the legacy I want. Is that people know me, know Christ through my, through my life. Philippians says that I might know him. That's all I want. I want to know him more and more. I want to meditate on his word more and more. That I might know him the Lord and Savior of my life. Psalm 19. If I don't get to Psalm 19, I won't get to 119, and we'll never get done. Clock hasn't moved, Dan. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. I'm not going to go through every verse. We're just going to touch on a few things. The law of the Lord, again, blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And you know what? The law of the Lord is perfect. There are no flaws in it. There are no errors in it. There are no contradictions, regardless of what the world would like to tell us. The law of the Lord is perfect. And it's what will, will, will revive our, our soul. Young people, you want to be wise? Look to the law of the Lord. Because in verse 8, the testimony of the Lord is sure. It is a solid foundation. We were out at Matt's house the other day, and, he, and he's got a, a pond out there and a huge rock. And you're not going to move that rock. That, that rock is not going anyplace. But the word of God is more sure than that rock. The word of God is not going to move at all. It is the rock for our life. It is the sure thing. It is the one thing that we can always depend on. It never fails. It will never fail me. It never has. 
You know, you look down that psalm and it says it's it's perfect, it's sure, it's right, it's pure, it's clean, it's true. What can you tell me in the world that has all of those characteristics? There's nothing that can line up with that. You know, I taught for and, and worked in the school system for over 40 years at, at the college level. Taught out of a lot of different books. Studied a lot of different books. Took me a long time, but at, at about 63 years old, I finally got my master's degree. And uh, But not one book I studied was perfect, sure, right, pure, clean, and true. Completely true. Not one. Except the Word of God. It's all of those things. And it is what will rejoice our hearts. It will, is what will make us wise. It is what will, will make us righteous or, or le- bring us to righteousness. It is what uh, will endure forever. It's all of that to us. The word of God is more than enough, it says. It is more than enough for the man of God or for the person of God to live to the glory of God. If we're faltering, it's because we're not in the word enough or we're trying to do it our own way. I'm pretty good at trying to do that. and it's get, It gets very frustrating. More to be desired than gold. What is the world after today? Bruce taught it today. The idols of the world is riches. The things of this world. You know? But it says here that this word of God is more desired than gold. Much fine gold. Boy, how the world likes to accumulate their their money and hold on to it and try to build more and and, uh, see who can be the richest man in the world or whatever. That's their, what they're striving for. But their goal is going to fail. The Word of God will never fail. It is more desirable than gold, than much fine gold. Sweeter than honey. You know, I've had honey. Uh, and, uh, love working with or eating honey and, and uh, making things out of it. Um, I, I just uh, picked some raspberries and, and some rhubarb from my garden shortly before we left and made a raspberry rhubarb crisp using nice honey. Uh, delicious. But when I was down in Mexico, I also had the opportunity to taste a honeycomb. And that's even sweeter. I mean, that's that's kind of like the maple syrup that we had the other night. It's just, you know, you get the commercial maple syrup and it's it's okay. It's better than nothing. But it's nothing like the, uh, the stuff we had hot out of the canner. Uh, the other night. It's just a whole different taste. That's the word of God. Sweeter than the honeycomb. It's more rich than the honeycomb. It has more to offer us. And it's by this that we're warned. Let's look now and, and finish up in Psalm 119. Forty years ago, May 1st of 1977, I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was fortunate. Two years later, I had, uh, through circumstances, uh, uh, ordained by God, uh, we met Dan and Dave's parents. And... uh, fell under his ministry for uh, probably seven years, a good seven years, uh, one-on-one. And I remember Lowell coming back one time from, I don't remember the year, but he came back one time from uh, Houston, Texas. His father had just died. Um, And his father was, is probably in my perspective, one of the most important 
men in my life because he, he uh, it was just a timely thing that, that happened that uh, drew me to the Lord instead of turning back on God. And uh, But he had just come back from the, f- the funeral, and I remember the message. I can, I can picture Lowell standing up in his living room uh, sharing the word, and he says, I... I uh, I got two inheritance. Here's my inheritance. I want to talk to you about my inheritance from my father. And he says, the, the first thing that I got is a sweater. And uh, somehow I think I ended up with that sweater. <laughs> but the first thing I got was a sweater. And, uh, and he says then, and he held, held up a packet, much thicker obviously than this, but something like this. And he says... The other inheritance, the more important inheritance I got, was this. He says, in his lifetime, my father had read the Bible through 80 sometimes. I don't know if it was 83 or or what it was, something like that. And at that point, it just touched my heart. And uh, I I purposed myself to start reading the Bible through, besides studying it, to start reading it on on an annual basis. And I noticed when we were down in in Mexico, one of the first times I read the Bible through, and I remember coming to Psalm 119, and you know how our custom is. We we like to look ahead to see how much we're going to read that day, two, three chapters. or You know, in the Psalms, you can usually read a whole Psalm. And I started looking at that Psalm, and I started looking, and I keep turning the pages, and it keeps going. I thought, how can anybody get through this thing? That's six, seven, eight, nine pages. And I thought, I'll read that later. <laughs> and uh, then I got to reading Psalm 119. 176 verses of it. And I started meditating on it. And I started thinking about it. Out of those 176 verses, if I recall right, 169 of them speak in one form or another about the law of the Lord. It uses different words. It uses... Uh, uh, the law uses testimonies and, and commandments and precepts and, and different things. But next time you read, start reading through that, take a look at that. 169 of the 176 verses talk about the law of the Lord. I'd say that's pretty important. When somebody emphasizes a subject that they're writing about that much, I'd say there's a, a significant importance to the word of God. And, and I, I started looking at it that way. And it started just helping me. Uh, and, and the more I meditated on it, the more, more I got out of it. This past year in, in December, uh, or shortly before, I think it was in November, I was down in the basement and cleaning up, trying to get rid of stuff and things like that. And I came across that stack of, a stack of those cards. And, uh, and, and I had wondered, at, you know, I wonder how many I got here, maybe 20, 21, 25. And I started counting them. And, and there was 44 cards that I had completed. That December, last December, my wife and I celebrated 44 years of marriage. And for those that know us, it hasn't been an easy 44 years. (laughs) The first five years, we were separated three times. And on the verge of divorce. And just because you become a Christian doesn't mean all your problems go away. And we've had struggles and, and uh, difficulties all the way through. But God has been faithful. God's word has been faithful. Behold, I am with you always. Not once in a while. God, through the love of, uh, his love for us, is with us always. And we have made it through now almost 45 years. And I am convinced that part of it is because of that reading the Bible through and making it the focus, meditating day and night. It's my delight. 
It is not a chore when I get up in the morning to, to read my Bible or to study my Bible. It, it, it's a pleasure. It's a delight to go out and read it. Uh, just a few things I'll point out. Um, uh, I didn't catch your name. Is it Terry? Terry was sharing about the conference he was just at. And uh, uh, just the significance and, and the meaning that it had in raising up his children and, and that. And the importance of what his life is all about. And uh, I want you to turn with me because I, I think from what Terry shared, this is an important verse today. Uh, I, I didn't put a lot on it when I was thinking about the message and that, um, other than to reinforce what, I, what the word is saying. But let's look at, at uh, Deuteronomy 6. You know, and the title of the chapter is The Greatest Commandment, that we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with your mind. But I want to look at verse 7 especially. You shall teach them. Who is them? Your children. You shall teach them diligently. Or you, yeah, I'm sorry, excuse me. Them there is uh, the commandments of the Lord. You shall teach the commandments of the Lord diligently to your children and talk about them when you sit in the house. It's not just a little prayer in the morning. It's not just once in a while or once a week or on Sunday morning. You shall talk about it to your kids when you're sitting in the house, when you're walking, by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. And as I was reading that uh, and studying that, I, I thought, you know, uh, of Adam and his family, and he's got four children now. Is three of them boys and one girl? Four boys. Okay. He's got four helping hands. Eight helping hands. But he's got four boys. And as they grow up, they're going to be with him in that, in that, farm, in that maple farm business. And he has the opportunity to share with them as he's working. You know, these trees don't come just out of nowhere. This is something God planted. This is God's work. This is God's miracle, how the sap in that tree can be made into maple syrup. And he's got the opportunity, and others do too, to, to teach your children when you're sitting around the home. You know, I recall that with Lowell and Margaret and their family, and, and, and as they were around the home, it was, I mean, we had our fun. We certainly did. Too many stories. You know? uh, but we also had, there was times of devotion and talking of the Lord, and, and the emphasis was always on Christ. And they have that opportunity. And you have that opportunity while you're sitting in the house to share Christ. While you're walking in the way, if you're going to the grocery store, we don't do much walking anymore. It's all in cars. But when you're in that car with your sons or daughters, to share with them, to talk with them, to, to show them the importance of Christ in your life and what it means to them. When they lie down at night, they don't just shouldn't just go to bed. Are you praying with them? Are you meditating? Are you reading a scripture? Is something important on their mind when they go to bed? And when they get up in the morning, is the first thing that they praise the Lord. It's not always easy. A lot of things in this world get in the way. But that's what Deuteronomy is telling us to do. And in Psalm... Uh, read through this. I'd encourage you to read through Psalm 119. I'm not going to hit on all of it. I'm just going to hit on a couple things to finish up real quick here. Verse 1. Blessed. Again, there's that word from Psalm 1. Blessed are those who, whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. 
Blessed are those who keep his testimony. That's the blessed person. Blessed are those. Verse 11. Young people, we live in a, in a world that is just full of idolatry. And not just spiritual idols. There are idols all over. Food, whatever you want to think of. Uh, looks, dress. It all can become an idol. Blessed, or how, how can a young man keep his way pure? Boy, it's tough this day. How can you young people keep your ways pure? By guarding it according to the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart, O Lord, that I might not sin against thee. In verse 11. I have stored up my word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Temptation comes your way. Know the word of God. Dwell on the word of God. That's why Psalm 1 says meditating day and night. Picking a verse, a small portion of scripture and just having it in your mind. Think of the story of Richard Wormbrandt in the prison and, and uh, how he memorized uh, so much of the word of God that sustained him through trials and, and, and persecution. It wasn't his physical strength that sustained him. It was the word of God that sustained him. Verse 33, real quick. Teach me. 34, give me understanding. 35 is lead me. 36, incline my heart. Turn my eyes. It's giving us everything we need. The word of God is more than enough for the people of God to live to the glory of God. It's more than enough. It, 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 every single thing that we need is right here. I, I missed, uh, if, just for a sec, go back to verses 15 and 16. There's some, I mean, we have a part in this. There's something we have to do. David says, I will meditate on your precepts. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word through the grace of God. Verse 81. Our hope. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. That's our hope. Our hope is that the word of God will dwell in us richly because it's his word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Think of the significance of that. A lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's what will guide us. If we have questions in life, go to the Word. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. It's all, it's the only thing we need. Other books are great. I love reading other books. But not before I've meditated and read the Bible. And only what lines up with the Bible. I'm not going to try to get the book. I'm not going to take what, what's in that book as gospel if it does not line up with the, with the Bible. When I read a book, it's most important. I don't care who the author is. And I, I've had the opportunity to read many great authors. But the, the book that he writes needs to line up with the Word of God. Because your word is truth. Finishing up the last verse, I'll share. Meditating day and night in verse 165. Great peace have those who love your law. The greatest peace that we can have is through Jesus Christ. 
I am the bread of life, he said. I am the bread of life. Nobody comes to the Father but through him. It's only through Christ. And it's only what's done for Christ that is going to last. I love the word. And it's more than enough for each one of us to live to the glory of God. And what is the purpose of man? The purpose of man is to please God is to live to God's glory, to honor God in all that we do and say, in word and deed, that we might honor Him. All Scripture is given by God to be used for our our instruction, our correction, our admonishing, It's there. That's what the purpose of Scripture is. And like Paul says to Timothy, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of this, Jesus, because he is able. Jesus is able through His Holy, through the Holy Spirit in me to deliver me to that day. And I look forward to that day. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. Then we'll be on the mountaintop. Then we'll be on the mountain top. God bless and thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. The word of God is, is powerful. And uh, changed my life and many of yours as well. Uh, just if you give me five minutes here, turn to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse I'd like to encourage all of you with and and, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We've been talking through Romans 8. We started Romans 8 last week and we got to where the Holy Spirit indwells me. I've become a part of the family of God. Remember that song we sang up there, In Royal Robes I Don't Deserve. Uh, But I have the privilege of serving His Majesty. In royal robes, I don't deserve. And I've become a part of the family of God. And in part of that, I'm not, I've been adopted into the family of God. I've become a child of God. But now the Spirit lives within me. The Spirit lives within me. And then we talked last week that He guides us. He leads us. He doesn't drive you, but He leads us. And uh, I just want to briefly, some of you have no idea, maybe a little bit of our story. So I'm going to rush it, but uh, at 19 years of age, I moved to Germany with my dad. He'd asked me to help him get started in Germany. i uh, just help him get started for a year if I'd come and help. And I uh, ended up uh, moving to a different area, marrying Shelly, a uh, high school sweetheart. Uh, and we started serving the Lord in Germany, working mainly a lot with refugees from many countries in the world. Uh, started working a little bit with Athletes in Action, too, with Campus Crusade and going behind the Iron Curtain, to give, presenting what Tim talked about, the Word of God to people who hadn't, whose laws were that God is dead and this book is illegal. And so we started smuggling them into the country, and that was before the fall of communism. But while we lived there, we saw the Berlin Wall come down and God do many things. It was a privilege to see three of our boys, were, all three boys were born in Germany, and uh, God just took care of us. Uh, and to make a long story short, the Lord had, through circumstances, called us to Macedonia, where we were for a number of years. Uh, two years after being there for a little while, they were going to kick us out of the country. They knew that we were there as missionaries. So the head of police called me in. He said, pack your bags. You're getting ready to go. Uh, move. We know really why you're here and so on. But to make a long story short, God preserved it. The Bible was being translated at that time. We got to be a part of bringing that in when it was completed, the Macedonian Bible. Uh, just seeing God's hand at work there in, in that part of the country. And uh, while we were there working, and the farthest thing from my mind, and I, I usually don't have dreams that mean anything else than what I ate too much or something, but uh, God spoke to us through a dream. And to make a long story short, it just in the dream I saw this, the shape of a state, Vermont. I'm from the Midwest, Minnesota, and all to Texas and California, some of those states I knew real well, you know. But I wasn't familiar. What's this state? You know, it looks like a, I'm sure it's a place. 
in the States here, but I looked on a map that morning and it was just like I'd seen it in my dream and a point on a map right near the lake on the north of by Canada. And it was just, just to make a long story short, this is what uh, God began to show us uh, that we were to move from there to come here. And uh, we did, uh, it, it took through many confirmations. It was uh, visiting somebody in Minnesota. They had one of those maple surf log cabin things and looked at it and said Swanton, Vermont. And Swanton through many things was where God was kind of calling us. Um, and sometime maybe I'll give you the long version. But this, we, we showed up here. We packed everything up and we came to, to Maine where Shelly's parents had just moved. And we came here and then uh, came to this town looking for a place to rent, uh, knocked on the doors of this exact church out here. It was locked, nobody here, but uh, looking for a place to rent. We ended up in St. Albans for a couple of years and worked at Wyeth Nutritionals. Uh, and then uh, it was through Dan Pinion that uh, uh, he didn't have a pastor at this time. He just asked if we'd come and speak. And so Jim came over to the house and and got me to make a long story short, uh, you asked us to candidate, and uh, I guess there's only probably about five of you who are original members here, or something like that. But uh, um, so we came here, and, and God has assembled a group of people. He called some from Baltimore, some from Syracuse, some of you are very local, but he's brought us together to be a part of something, to be light and salt in the earth. And that's a privileged to see now what God's going to do and what he continues to do and how he's using the kids here you kids to in in the work of God so I want to encourage you with that but I, if you turn to that verse here's what I'd like you to do you've already done it this morning but is pray for us and we're going to pray for you but uh second Corinthians I lost my place um second Corinthians verse uh, chapter one and verse 11 well before that he just mentions how Paul almost didn't have the strength to continue. They almost died. But he gets to this end of this verse and says, you also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on behalf of the blessings granted us through the prayers of many. Why is it that when something happens in the church and we get together and somebody gets sick or somebody, you shared the gospel, you get together and you tell people, pray for me, pray for me. Does it help? Yes, that's my whole point, just a, a minute here, is that prayer helps. Paul said, you also must help us. You've already helped us today uh, in different ways. But kids, you know, when you pray, and if you pray for us, you're actually helping us. Realize that. Anytime you pray, you're helping people. And through the prayers of many, many are going to give thanks then to God for what he does. As you hear of answered prayer and things. And so share it. Share it with others. So I really want to just vote that prayer helps. Paul wouldn't have said, you must also help us. But by prayer, simply praying. You say, well, that doesn't do any I don't seem to hear anything. I don't seem to get anywhere. Hey, believe the word of God. Must help. And you can help us by praying for us. We're going to be definitely praying for you guys. I especially pray help uh, in, in the message I'm to deliver, Shelly and Anna and Ruthie, we've got songs prepared and planned that before I speak, they'll be singing and, and ministering in that way as well. But just, uh, again, continue to pray for us. Thank you so much already today for your prayer. But uh, you help us. And it was maybe, I don't remember how long ago I'd asked. Uh, I came before the board and I presented this idea to go to Europe for about five weeks and take our vacation and using my travel time, just combine it. And it's a long time to be gone. I've never been on that long from you guys either. But as we were praying about it, and I mentioned it, and everybody was fine with it, and, and it was great. And, and, and I said maybe in a year or two, depending on how God works things out. And uh, It wasn't too much longer. I think I only told the board, really. I don't think I really passed that on to anybody, just kind of waiting, seeing what God would do. But a family was visiting us one day, and, and we had supper together. And at the end, they handed us a, a check and an offering, and, and, and it was a very generous offering. And, and I... After they left, I opened it and looked, or maybe I did before, I can't remember, but I looked in it and I began to weep. And I just looked at Shelly and said, look at this. And we both had the same idea, Europe, we both said Europe. And uh, just just little by little, God began, this would go in a good way to help, her, you know, start off our trip and, and help. So I, I just thank God for his provision. Um, through that, though, that kind of set up things, but you have to, set it up on that end as well. And so I pray, if you pray for our flight, we have about seven flights. 
uh, train, train travel and renting cars and, and driving. So we just, uh, just thank you so much. I, I thank you. You do help us. I so know that and I sense that when we're traveling, that God is moving in an answer to prayer. And I'm going to learn things on this trip as well and, and be blessed in that way. But uh, as Chris Keish said, he wanted us to come over one last time. He says, in case you have a die in an accident or, you know, Chris, he said he's so, so comforting to us. And, but uh, so he wanted to get together one last time in case it was our last time. You know, <laughs> He is so encouraging. Anyway, he's not here today, so I can talk about him. But uh, let's let's pray. We're going to go and continue to fellowship and, and stuff out at the lake again if you Forgot about it, like uh, Terry said today, there's usually plenty of food. Uh, we haven't run out yet. And uh, join us out there for a time of fellowship and, and just being together. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you again today for your word. People have died to give it to us in our own language. We take it, as Tim shared, Lord, we just ask your blessing upon it, that it would become more and more precious to us and that uh, it would feed our souls. And again, be with us this week, guide us, protect us, Use us, Lord, in your purposes. And we press you pray, too, for the time at field days again, that it would be a very profitable time and year and bless each one who takes part and those who help by praying as well. God, thank you for it all. And we put it in your hands. Thank you for the food that you've already provided for our meal here this afternoon. Just bless our time and, and keep everyone safe down there as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.